there, Peter Stevens, Bundaberg. I'm here to show you how to rig up a bait to catch a big mackerel. Let's do it. These are the bits I use. Four ninos to suit the bait. A net lead, which you can buy from commercial fishing shops or a um, marine place. A bit of wire, that's 70 pound wire, and a little swivel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the eyes of the hooks up with these pliers and give them a bit of a bend. You bend them down like that so they hang better in the bait. I'll show you once I've done them. These pliers are just about finished so they're not opening the hooks up as far as they should be but we'll we'll get this to work and hopefully not stick one in my hand. This last one will be the front hook. You don't open it up because the wire will fall out but you give him a bit of a bend down and we'll show you why we do that in a sec as well. So there's the four of them together. The eyes bending down lets them sit flatter. If you had them straight eyed they wouldn't be as far in the bait. So by having the eyes bent like that, lets your hooks sit neater, more neatly. And then we close them up. <laughs> we catch a fish while we're doing it. Is it still there? Yeah. Hang on. We'll be, we'll be back in one minute. before we were so rudely interrupted. Double check that the hooks are closed because we were interrupted while we were doing that. It's just a bit of lead on the front hook. I leave them loose so you can adjust them. Yeah, all of my rigging is fairly loose so it's adjustable. When you're making traces, because you're, wig you're wiggling the wire around, it's always easier to put the swivel on first. So the other end of it can spin around freely and poke your cameraman. This is just a haywire twist and the bit on the end is a what's called a barrel wrap. You bend that around there, that's enough to secure it. You bend this end over and wind it and it snaps off. There's no sharp ends there that'll cut your fingers or cut your line. Leave a bigger loop on this end. And we do the same thing here. We'll twist it up a couple of times and then
do that. And again, nothing to cut. Explain your uh, rod and reel. What, what have you got here? You got a braid leader combo? Yeah, there's a um, 60 pound leader on here with 50 pound braid. And what knot do you use down here then? I don't know what it's called, it's a, um, there's a, a bimini there and it's like a backwards sort of Albright but I'm not sure what it's actual name is so it's a knot that a, a barra fisherman showed me. Right, so there's our rig. Grab a bit of copper wire off the floor. Where do you get this copper wire from? I get this from um, people building houses, all their offcuts. Just leftover stuff. Or you can get it from motor winders and people like that. I put a cut in the middle of the Benito's nose, like that. It keeps everything centred when you when you're tying it on. Then through the head, bit of wire on the needle, pull it through. Pull the bottom one up into the slot, top one down into the slot, and twist. Once you've got one twist, you can just tighten it up a bit, like that. Now it's ready to go on the hooks. So what you do, you measure. You have your hooks fairly loose. You want the front hook just in front of his nose. And you can see how the bend suits the shape of his nose. Measure where the back one goes. Just beside this fin. These hooks have got an offset. So you put them in so the point's just under the skin on that side and you loosen your bait up. There's your front hook in and it's ended up just where we want. And then what I do, poke the wire through there. If we have a look from the top, it's dead centre. From the side, it's level with his eyes. I just wrap the wire around the bottom of the eye of the hook. This just makes it stick up a little bit, just so it lifts the toe point, lifts the toe point over his nose. Loosen it up, and we should be able to drop that over the side, and it should wriggle like a real one. I usually do about three and a half knots. When, <clears throat> when you're letting your baits out, you always turn away from the side you're letting it out on. That way, keeps your other baits over here, the one you're putting out straight out behind you. It keeps them from tangling up. Also, keep your thumb on it as you're feeding out. even your other thumb behind the drag lever. So if you do get a bite, you can hook the fish. When I let my baits out, I, when I wind them in, sorry, when I wind them in, I usually do a fast wind, backwards and forwards, so it shows how far you've had them out. When you're letting them back out, you can let them out that far. 
Test your drag every time, turn your ratchet on. And you're ready to go. There's one on the bike. Yeah. This was our carefully rigged Bonito as we were feeding it out. It got a bit heavier. And um, what I said about keeping your thumb on it, that was just proved. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put him in the boat. That's a nice 16, 17 kilo mackerel. And hooked in the back of the head, played him like a lure. <laughs> this is a garfish. They're easier to rig. You can still get them to wiggle, you can still get them to swim properly. Same sort of principles, different rig, we're using 7Os here measuring it up so the eye of the hook's just in front of his nose, the back one's going to go through just in front of his tail. So tell us a bit about the different baits, the differences between gar and yakas and tell us the differences between the what you like the best. And well I, I look at them as big baits or little baits. When the fish are thick and the smaller class of fish, your little baits are probably better. Your, um, your gar, your yakas, your slimies. Um, when there are bigger fish or when they're harder to catch, bigger baits that um, swim harder probably work better. Bigger baits will, you'll normally get more bites on bigger baits if they're a better class of fish. Um, if you've got your summertime six and seven kilo ones around, these little baits, the gar, the sauries, the yakas, work well. What I'm going to do with this gar, I've poked a bit of wire through his head. What I want to try and do, again, is get his nose just up under the eye of that hook. So I poke my wire through there, and you can see that keeps it centered. Then I wrap that around there a couple of times. And then the remainder just holds his head. So you go centered, just slightly higher than the eye of the, the eye of the, this is a bit of a daggy old gar, but we'll see how he goes. Once you put him on the rig, bend the rig up so the hooks are um, loose. If you have a bait which is pulled over like that by the hooks, it's going to spin like a top every time. So you want all your weight on the front hook. We'll chuck this over the side and see what he does. He's working, he's not spinning. 
they usually swim better than that, but he's not spinning, so he'll, he'll work.